Hi, welcome to our first lesson in our units on angles and triangles. Um, first, we're going to throw angles on a graph, which you probably haven't seen before. And there's a way we always do it. It's called standard position, and today we're only going to be using quadrant 1. So basically, this quadrant here is quadrant 1. And it goes 2, 3, 4, like that. But for today, we're just looking at quadrant 1. All right, angles in standard position always, always, always start from here. That's our initial arm. And then our terminal arm can move, can rotate anywhere it wants. So in this case, our terminal arm has rotated up to here by this angle here. Um, we use, we're going to be using the Greek letter theta today for angles. It's like x, but it's a lowercase Greek letter theta. You see it all the time when you're dealing with angles. Okay, and now example one wants us to draw an angle in standard position. So there's our x, y axes. There's my initial arm. And then it says the point 4, 7 is going to be on my terminal arm. So there's 4 there, there's 7 there. So there's my point 4, 7. So all done. Oh, and then so that the angle theta is there. That's our angle theta. Okay, and it wants, oh, and that's point P. And so it wants to know the distance from the origin, 0, 0, up to point P. So this distance right here. Okay, and if I do a little dotted line down here, I can see that that's 7, and this is 4, so I can use Pythagoras to figure out this side. I'm going to call this side R, which may seem like a weird choice, but, so let's say I've got my initial arm here, and then I've got this point on my terminal arm. Basically, the reason we call it R is because if I take this terminal arm and rotate it, around, this point is going to move around, and it's going to inscribe a circle. So r is going to be the radius of that circle. So that's why we call the distance from the origin to point, B, point P r. That's why we call it r. Oops, didn't want to do that. Come on back. I wanted to just erase this. There we go, okay. And now part B wants us to determine the distance from the origin to P. So we know that r squared is going to equal 4 squared plus 7 squared, which is going to be 16 plus 49 is 65. So I got r squared equals 65. I'm going to square root both sides. Square root of r squared is the absolute value of r equals root 65, so r is going to equal plus or minus root 65, and of course our radius can't be negative, so our radius is going to be root 65. Okay, so let's, I if I can squeeze that on my diagram here, yeah, I'll just write over here, root 65 is there, perfect. Okay, and now part C, I'm going to write up here, just to save some space, we don't need to keep scrolling up and down wants to know the exact values of sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. So sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 7 over root 65. Um, notice this is the one time, for whatever reason, we're allowed to leave roots on the bottom. So we're just going to leave that as root 65 instead of multiplying top and bottom by root 65 to rationalize the denominator. Okay, and now we've got cos theta. And that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so 4 over root 65. And tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 7 over 4. Part D asks us for the angle, or sorry, the measure of angle theta. So I'm going to use tan theta, because it's the only one without a root in it. So if tan theta equals 7 over root 65, or sorry, 7 over 4, then theta is going to equal inverse tan of 7 over 4, which means theta equals approximately 60 degrees. Normally you'll be finding angles to the nearest degree. Okay, so again, angles in standard position. Our initial arm never moves. Our terminal arm rotates up and away from the initial arm, and that's the angle we measure.
Okay, um, example two, we're doing the exact same thing. So there's our crosshairs. There's my initial arm. And we're looking at point P is at 1, 1 this time. So there's my point P. And again, we need to figure out R. So I can use that right angle triangle. It has 1 on either side, so I get R squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared. Oops. Oops. Not ready to square both sides yet. So r squared is going to equal 2. Square root both sides. And we know this is going to be plus or minus 2 throughout the negative, so our radius is going to be root 2. So that's root 2 there. And then same as on the last page, they want to know the exact values of these things of sine, cos, and tan. So sine theta equals 1 over root 2. cos theta equals 1 over root 2, and tan theta equals 1 over 1, otherwise known as 1. Okay, um, D asks us for the measure of angle theta. Remember, angle theta is right there between the initial and the terminal arms. And let's use tan because it's easy again. So theta is going to equal inverse tan. 1, which not surprisingly is 45 degrees, which some of you had probably already figured out because basically we're just cutting a square in half. Okay? Really important that you know these things for 45 degrees. So sine of 45 is 1 over root 2, cos of 45 is 1 over root 2, and tan of 45 is 1. Okay? The other ones you're going to need to know are exact values of sine, cos, and tan are for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. And I'm going to use the bottom part of the page to show you some special triangles you can use for both of these. So the one you've already seen, if we just set up a right angle triangle with these as ones, Pythagoras tells that's, us that's root 2. And of course we have 45 degrees in both other corners. So that's the triangle you can use for 45 degrees. For 30 and 60 degrees, we start it with an equilateral triangle. All sides are too long. Equilateral triangle, these corners are going to be 60. All corners are going to be 60. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that equilateral triangle in half. So that's going to be a 90 degree angle. And that 2 is going to get split into that part's 1 and that part's 1. And now if I use Pythagoras, on this, and let's just call this A, then I get 2 squared, oops, hypotenuse is always on the side by itself, so I get 2 squared equals 1 squared plus A squared, so I get 4 equals 1 plus A squared minus 1 from both sides, I get 3 equals A squared square root, and we're going to end up with positive or negative root 3 eventually, so a is going to equal root 3. And that, of course, is going to be half of 60, so that's 30 degrees. Okay, so if you need to figure out exact values for 45 degrees, you can use this triangle for 30 degrees or 60 degrees. You can use that. And by exact values, of course, I mean the exact values of sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. Okay, headings. So we're going to look at some headings so that we can do some bizarre contrived word problems. Um, our first heading, notice, is west 30 degrees south. So you start at straight west, and then you head south 30 degrees, and you end up at your terminal arm, or your direction, I guess, which will end up being your terminal arm a lot of times. Okay, so notice that for that same arm, I could also start south, then go, oops, not 30 degrees. I'd have to go 60 degrees. Jeez, I'm making a mess. I'd have to go 60 degrees west. So west 60 south is the same as south, or sorry, west 30 south is the same as south 60 degrees west. 
Okay, and same over here. West, 40 north. Start west, go 40 degrees towards the north. I could also start at north, and then go 50 degrees towards the west. Those are identical. Okay, so let's have a look at example two using our new knowledge of headings. So we have an aircraft that made an emergency landing 200 kilometers from an airport. Its heading from the airport was east 50 degrees north. Okay, so here's our crosshairs here. And we start out east, and then we go north 50 degrees. So I started out east, I went north 50 degrees, so that's 50 degrees. I'm going to write that in black so it's easier to read. So there's our 50 degrees. And now our land-based rescue team has to travel east and then north to get to the aircraft. So they're going to have to travel across here and then they're going to go straight north up there. Um, this question is ludicrous. Uh, my best guess is that they're in Saskatchewan where you have a bunch of roads running directly east and north and nothing within 200 kilometers of an airport. That's my best guess. But anyway, so we need to travel east and then north, so let's call this A down here. We know that's 200 kilometers. Actually, let's not call it A. Let's call it E for east. Let's call this E and call that N. And now we're just doing some uh, grade 10 trigonometry. So notice that um, if we want to find out E first, E is adjacent to the angle 50 and we have the hypotenuse, so we need to use the cosine of 50 degrees equals E over 200. Multiply both sides by 200. Fire that into our calculators and we get E to the nearest kilometer is 129 kilometers. And do the same thing except for we're going to have to use sine because and it's opposite the 50 degrees. So I get, oops, not cos, sine, I said. So I get sine of 50 degrees equals n over 200. Multiply both sides by 200. And in this case, I get n equals 153 kilometers to the nearest kilometer. So up here in rural northern Saskatchewan, um, the team is going to have to get on a road and go 129 kilometers east, then 153 kilometers north. Okay, so the most important things we learned today were anytime you have an angle in standard position, you have an initial arm here, and then your terminal arm is going to rotate up. Okay, tomorrow our terminal arm is going to rotate wherever the heck we like. So tomorrow the terminal arm is going to rotate, say, to there. Okay. Um, the other important thing you need to know are these special triangles here. So you need to know how to get exact values for sine, cosine, and tan of 45, 30, and 60 degrees using these triangles.